This novel covers some very controversial issues. Abortion, religious fanaticism, martyrdom, mental illness, female boxing, rich kids living in New York. It's all over the place. Got a stray eyebrow hair. And every now and then they will curl in front of my vision. And I have to, I have to brush my eyebrows. Today we're going to talk about the novel A Book of American Martyrs by Joyce Carol Oates. this book by accident when I was at the store in one of those bargain bins off in the corner just on a whim I decided to go check it out she doesn't love a good bargain book bargain book so I'm fishing around and I see this book check this out that's a nice cover right like look at that it's very abstract it's very symbolic of the story and I got it for like four bucks so I thought you know what I'm gonna spend four dollars I'm gonna get this book and I'm gonna read it and I read it and it's a great book it's a fascinating image of reality told mystically, you know, getting, getting into the spirit of people. A Book of American Martyrs is about a murder of an abortion clinic doctor. Half of the book is about the murderer, Luther Dunphy, and the other half of the book is about Gus Voorhees. That's a really broad umbrella for what this book is about, because it's so much more than just about the murder. It's a classic American novel of American families in the wake of tragedy. This book has such an interesting structure. So the prologue is the inciting incident. What kicks this whole thing off into action? And it's the murder of Gus Voorhees by Luther Dunphy. He surrenders, he gives himself up, he gets taken to jail, Gus Voorhees, passes away. Him and his escort, Timothy Barron, pass away. And then immediately after the incident, you have almost a, a biography of Luther Dunphy. And it really sets up what was going on in his head when he decided to murder Gus. That biography takes you all the way back from childhood. Luther is involved in a fatal car crash which kills his daughter. And he goes into a deep mourning for this. I mean, of course, you just lost your child and you were driving. He even blocks it out of his memory and he completely devotes himself to religion. It's almost as if he gets into religion as a coping mechanism. For Luther, it's easier to dive deep into religion, deep into the scriptures and the church than it is to dive into himself and allow himself to feel these feelings of possibly having killed his daughter. And I don't think in the entire novel he really comes to some kind of closure. And that, of course, affects the rest of his family. It affects his wife, who completely detaches. She becomes a shell of herself, you know, of course, as you would expect. She stops, you know, caring so much about the other kids. She sleeps in her room all day. She becomes depressed. Luther Dunphy leaves behind his wife and two other kids, Don and Luke, and then his wife, Edna May. They're a poor family. Dad is a roofer, carpenter. He works all day. After the, the car accident, he devotes himself to religion. He goes to the church all the time. He gives his services away. His decision to kill an abortion clinic doctor comes from his inability to completely cope with his guilt of killing his daughter in the car crash. He decides that being a martyr and killing this man, preventing him from doing any further harm, is going to in some way redeem him, at least in maybe his own eyes, the fact that he sacrificed, that he gave himself to Jesus. So Luther Dunphy is taken to jail and he's tried for his murder and he pleads guilty. There was never an issue of whether or not he did it. He confessed, he admitted it, and he told him, that's what was needed, so that's what I did. The second part of the novel follows Gus Voorhees, but more specifically his family. Gus Voorhees has chosen to dedicate his life to women's health, specifically uh, Planned Parenthood, 
in dealing with abortions and even delivering babies. He's a well-respected doctor. He doesn't even need to do this. He does it because he feels firmly in his philosophy that it is the right thing to do. And in the same way that Luther Dunphy is a fanatic in his religion, so is Gus Voorhees about his position. He is completely fanatical to the point where he works so much that he kind of forgets about his family. The Voorhees family is Gus, Jenna is his wife, Naomi is his daughter, Darren is the his son, and then they have an adopted daughter, Melissa. I mean, they're a very well-off family, and man, they're good people. They really just want to do what's right. The main thing is that Gus has given himself over to his profession with his family, the relationship with his family as collateral damage. When he has time, man, he spends every waking minute he can with them. You know, he, he makes vacations for them. He, he gives them everything he can, but he puts his philosophy and he puts his priorities in his work. And that's really the downfall, or maybe not, but that's really what happens with Gus and what happens with the glue of this family. The glue is so loose already that once the murder takes place, it just falls apart. Jenna is a women's right and women's health writer also. So their whole family is in that, that culture. You know, and the Dunphys are also in that culture. Everyone goes to church. Everyone talks the same way. Everyone reads the same Bible. Everyone, it's all, it's a, it's a community. And it's like these, these two planets smashing into each other. And that's, that, that's the murder, is when these two planets smash into each other. And then what fly off the planets are the, the, the repercussions of that action. The third part of the novel follows the Dunphy family during the trial of Luther Dunphy, but mainly focusing on Dawn and how she copes with it. Dawn has a lot going against her. She's emotionally dealing with the fact that her father is on death row. You know, she has a father who's either on trial or on death row during this part of the novel. And she's not getting along in school very well. She's not able to focus. She's got a mom who doesn't really care for her because the mom is depressed. Dawn doesn't have an outlet. Her brother Luke is in the same position. So it's really just Dunphy looking out for herself. She gets held back. She gets labeled, you know, mentally ill. She gets labeled, she gets labeled challenged. Um, she basically becomes like a lost cause in the school and they just send her through the grade levels just to get her out of the school. And she even says in the novel that she's going to just basically end up being nothing. She's, she's lost and she has nothing to turn to. So during the course of the third section of the novel, Luther is tried, he is convicted, and he is sentenced to death. Now the end of the third part of the novel is actually the execution of Luther Dunphy. Section four picks up from the Voorhees perspective immediately after his ex uh, Luther Dunphy's execution, and mainly it follows Naomi. Naomi has also lost her father. Her mother, Jenna, has gone off into the world and abandoned her responsibilities as a mother. Um, her brother, Darren, he's doing his own thing. He's, he's completely removing himself from the Voorhees name. And Melissa, the adopted daughter, she's staying with the grandparents, you know, Jenna's grandparents, Jenna's parents. So Naomi's kind of by herself. She's just trying to make it in the world and she's grieving. She's grieving for her father. And she also, just like her, just like her father, fanatically, she dedicates her life to archiving the life and death of Gus Voorhees. So she does all this research, she does a bunch of interviews, she basically compiles a documentary, you know, the scope of a documentary. And then she, got, she gets doubtful on herself until she gets called by her grandmother from her father's side, and she moves to New York. As Naomi is trying to find herself through this well of grief alone, so is Dawn. Dawn is out there, alone, and they're both grieving. And the first part of section four follows Naomi, and the second part of section four goes to Dawn. And Dawn finds her purpose in boxing. She becomes a world-class boxer. She starts getting matches. She starts winning her fights. She's idolizing Mike Tyson. Joyce Carol Oates loves the sport of boxing. So it makes sense that one of the 
characters in her novel becomes a boxer, which is pretty cool. Section five almost alternates between Naomi's perspective and Dawn's perspective. So as Dawn is accelerating into her career as a boxer, Naomi starts to do more research around her father to the point where she starts doing research about Luther Dunphy. And she becomes very familiar with Dawn Dunphy. She hates Dawn Dunphy. And then she realizes she's a boxer. So there's this really tense moment when Dawn and Naomi are sitting next to each other. Dawn doesn't know who Naomi is. Naomi knows who Dawn is. She put herself in that situation. So we go from this really broad topic of, of the entire family, of these, these gentrifications almost of, of uh, society into these very personal stories of children grieving their parents, grieving their childhood, grieving themselves, you know? It's almost like at the time of the murder, Don, all of these people were stunted. You know, they stopped maturing emotionally until they could cope with those things. And that's really kind of how life is. You know, if you're dealing with something traumatic, if you don't cope with it, you're basically staying in that same position until you learn to resolve it. Whatever it is, you know, it could be trauma from a childhood, it could be trauma from adulthood. You are whatever it is you were until you learn to resolve your trauma. And that's one of the things about this book is these characters are so lost in this cycle that they've created, this, this way of coping, whether it's negative or positive, they're stuck in this cycle, you know, in this pursuit, this Ouroboros pursuit until they're able to come to a resolution, until they're able to put that burden of guilt and grief down. And the moment when it happens in this novel, if you have to read 724 pages until you get to that moment. And that moment really is on the last page. And when you read that last sentence, oh my God, it's so heartbreaking because you've been through so much with these characters. You know so much. You've been through their childhood. You've been with them in adolescence. You've been through their joys. You've been through their hells. And once they are able to, once they are able to breathe, you breathe with them. That's what happens. Basically, what you learn from this novel is empathy. That you never know exactly why people are doing what they do. And I would even say that people don't do anything for the pure joy of doing evil. Even if there's a, an evil act, like murdering Gus Voorhees, Luther Dunphy doesn't do it to be evil. In his mind, that's the right thing to do. Read it. Let's talk about it. Send some comments in the section below. Let's get a discussion going. Have you read it? Are you going to read it? What questions do you have about it? Let's get some dialogue going, guys. Let's talk about this thing, because it was such a great novel, and I haven't really seen too many people online who have read it. So let's talk about it. A Book of American Martyrs by Joyce Carol Oates. Highly recommended. Thanks for watching.